What's up everybody? We got Losers Bracket Round 3 action coming at you. Um, ready for a miracle on the Legion side taking on Stay Green. On left, obviously Stay Green getting knocked down the round at 8 by uh, Team Excellence. So, didn't start out very well in this Diamond Cycle 9, but uh, recovering, getting their way through the Losers Bracket taking out Team Kage in the last round. And hoping for a, another series victory here because they don't want to get knocked out early. Uh, Banned so far as things are moving pretty fast. Retrotag, Scout, Tempest, and Cersei. Interesting that Tempest gets banned out, almost never gets banned out this early on. Um, Scout, Cersei, very typical from Swindle. He hates those heroes. I completely understand why he hates those heroes. I hate those heroes. Um, so not really that big a deal. He's just busting through these picks, man. He's snap picking all sorts of stuff. Uh, regardless, Keeper, Warbeast, Ravener on the Legion side. Lots of melee. That's pretty impressive. But it's quite a bit of lockdown from Keeper. We'll help Warbeast out uh, when it comes to his damage. Lots of push as well with Keeper and Warbeast doing very, very well in that department. It's all a gank with Rav as well. Uh, obviously looking for a support hero over here, but they should have their suicide, a jungler, I suppose, in Keeper. We'll see what they actually do with that. And then a mid laner with Ravener. They definitely have a suicide. The question is whether they're going to juggle with the Keeper or short lane him. I really hope they don't short lane him. I hope they don't short lane the Warbeast. I hope they don't short lane the Ravener. It just doesn't seem like that those heroes need that, and it doesn't seem like they benefit too much from that. Hellborn's team, meanwhile, Pestilence, Ophelia, and Slither, obviously, Oaf, a very, very popular hero, and someone likes him very much. So does everybody. He gets banned out. He gets picked up pretty much every single game, either in the, in the first stage, either bans or picks. And... Pesty, one of the strongest heroes in the game in his own right. A great initiator, so they're very powerful as well. No stun, but the rest of his team will help with, help him out with that, and he provides a ton of damage. So, strong heroes on both sides. Obviously, Hellborn have a good push, good team fight, and solid gank potential. Both looking for a support hero here. Hellborn looking for a suicide and a support. Legion looking for probably a short laner and a support. I would hope. It's possible that they're just looking for a dual support here and they're not going to jungle the Keeper, but or the Warbeast, but I would really like them to. Okay, let us let let me revise, revise that. I don't think either of those heroes should be jungled at this point in the game. I do think it's better to jungle them than to have them run in the short lane, and I don't think you can have them either of them run in mid. So, with them already being picked, they should one of them should jungle. I would not have picked both of them in this lineup, but we'll see how our IFM does it. And, boy. Anyway. <laughs> Bad limp, apparently. I don't know. Uh, bands are coming out here. Drunken Master, Grunex, and Kraken Band out here for the Legion side. It makes tons of sense. Those are all potential suicide heroes, and they're all melee's uh, heroes that, that Hellborn does like, so... Very sensible, certainly, and Engineer, Bubbles, and Corrupted Disciple getting banned out by Swindle over here. Taking out a support, interesting, because he doesn't have his own, but obviously doesn't want the Legion Tide side to be able to first pick that NG. And then Bubbles and CD taken out because he already has a short laner, he already has a mid hero, and he doesn't want the Legion team to be able to run that Bubbles, which would certainly fit their lineup fairly well, actually. Bubbles Warby is a pretty strong combination, and Corrupted Disciple with a lockdown from Keeper. Would, would greatly enjoy being put into this lineup, providing a ton of damage. So Legion side having plenty of damage here, really. They're perhaps lacking a lot, little bit of lockdown. They don't have very much burst at all. So with the Ophelia New Earth's Blessing, that's going to be a bit of an issue because they can initiate it on somebody, but if they get healed, it's like, well, they might, they, they could very possibly get away. Regardless, Master of Arms is the first pick here for the, for the Legion side, and I assume it's going to be a support master. Could be on the carry role. We saw a reason versus Simplified, and they ran the carry Master of Arms on Death Growl in a man of dual lane, which was a little interesting, but worked quite well for them, so no surprise if it is running a carry, carry format, but I do suspect it will be a uh, a support hero. I'm just thinking, yep, Torture are going to be the support option here for Hellborn, and not a big surprise there. They do like their Torture, and with another stun here in this lineup, that makes plenty of sense. Pestilence Torture probably going to be the mid lane. Slither on the solo short. Ophelia in the jungle, and just looking to pick up a Suicide at this point. Plenty of options in that regard. Pharaoh is still on the board. We've got... what else? Okay, maybe not plenty of options, but they've got Pharaoh. That's it. Kronos. Hey, we've seen some of that. It's been very powerful. And... I don't know. Lodestone. Could do that, I guess. Magmus is a possibility. Or you could also just run the, the, the mana pseudo tri lane. And if you feel like picking up another 
mid or short lane hero. We'll see what they choose to do. Valkyrie. I think Valk has tons of suicide potential. It's been seen a couple of times, but it seems to me like that would be a, a strong suicide. I think Valk has lots of potential in the game as well, just in general. But that's just me. Anyway, make, wait on the last pick here from the Legion side, and I'm presuming it's... I hope it's going to be a short laner. It's probably not, but it's. I hope it's going to be a carry hero. Well, maybe not, maybe not a late game carry, maybe a mid game carry. Crop actually would have work, would have worked really well for that. Soul Stealer, that's fine. Uh, that's 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 quite strong. It's quite strong in the middle. It'll help it'll help them take go late. So I like that pick. Uh, so leads the side here having a lot of late game damage between Warbeast, Soul Stealer, and Ravener. Plenty of carry and semi carry potential there, and they just have to get there. Uh, but it shouldn't be that big a deal. Rav's pretty strong mid. So is Soul Stealer. He can get collapsed. Solstice can get collapsed on really hard, so we'll see how hard he does get punished. But it's going to be the Pharaoh here as the suicide laner for the Hellborn side, and nothing too surprising from them or from their lanes. They have lots of gank potential, especially the strong initiation from Pharaoh and Pestilence. So that should combo extremely well. Plenty of stuns, some uh, team fight. Not quite as much as Legion has, I think, with the Solstice Burst Keeper of the Forest, but close. And Hellborn's lane should be pretty obvious to call. Pestilence and Torturer in the middle, Pharaoh in the Suicide Slayer in the short lane, and Ophelia in the jungle. Legion side, I suspect, will see a Suicide... I don't remember if Fitzbell or Hopgrod is their jungle player. I'm thinking it's going to be Master and Engineer... Uh, sorry, Master and Ravener mid. Which is powerful. Lots of stuns, of course. Great setup there from Master into the Ravener Ball Lightning. And the rest of the lanes are a little more difficult to call. Soul Slayer should be solo bot, but whether Warbeast or Keeper is in the jungle is a big question. I think Keeper jungle makes a little more sense to me. Warbeast not a great jungler early on. He does pretty well once he gets the Abyssal Skull. He can probably out jungle the Keeper, but obviously he's not going to start out the game with an Abyssal Skull. So in the Suicide role might make a little more sense. And it looks like the entire Legion side is going to go protect their jungle, so it looks like this is going to be a jungle keeper, which is, I think, the right decision. Not really what I would have gone for. I think Parasite would have fit a lot better. Then again, they sort of, uh, or really, or, over Warbeast. I think I would have picked Parasite over Warbeast and Suicide of the Keeper, because they need the Keeper a little bit to lock people down for Soul Stealer, and sort of for Warbeast, so that would eliminate the problem if you pick Parasite over Warbeast. But, uh, so Keeper Root is better than what's, uh, or see, Keeper Parasite better than Warbeast Parasite, so that seems like it's the preferred that's a uh, uh, combination to me, and it is in fact going to be a Suicide Keeper. Not a huge fan of that. Keeper Suicide's obviously very powerful, and he'll do very well up here. It's not really what I have an issue with. It's that Warbeast Jungle initially does not do very well. Um, for one, he can't get the battle cry because it's too much mana. He already has issues with War Beast Wolves costing a ton of mana. He needs to bring tons of mana regen into the woods in order to keep that up. So he won't be able to provide extra damage for his team. And more importantly, Keeper is just going to jungle faster than he will in the early levels. So if if this is an extremely passive War Beast, as I suspect it will be, that's not going to benefit Legion too much, especially compared to the Sophilia, who will be able to gank very heavily. Now, uh, Chessie is going to th pull these creeps back a little bit into the jungle, in fact, and use them to jungle, so I like that decision. This is sort of the anti um, pull strat now, kind of. So this archer's actually going to come all the way back over here, so Chessie will get a Vagabond leader kill. No, in fact, missing a CS there. So we missed both the assassin and the leader. But now I'm going to drag the creeps right back into lane, and this will push out a little bit, allow Slither to get some uh, lane control and get some CS. So he should do very well up here on top against this Keeper of the Forest. Certainly Keeper is going to have a hell of a time trying to kill him. Some harass damage coming out actually, pretty solid, as Slither's taking quite a bit of, of punishment, but with the Toxicity debuff, the Poison Spray Keeper is going to get zoned out fairly effectively. And of course, Ophelia coming in from the side, presumably. Yep, she already has a Rev Ward, so we'll see if she uses that to try to unblock a camp, none of which are blocked. 
So they'll probably get dropped down for Keeper and turn into a death at some point for him. Mid lane is Pesty Torture versus Ravener and see Ball Lightning, they're going on to Pesty. On top of the charge shot, and Squiggle's gonna fall here. So getting caught out there, it's too much damage coming out as it looks like uh, Z Freak was a little late with the chain reactions. I'm not sure if it would have mattered because it's just, he took a ton of damage, but nonetheless, uh, a bloodlust here in favor of Legion, so well done to them. But meanwhile, it's going to be Pharaoh versus Soul Stealer, and Pharaoh, Soul Stealer should win this lane pretty hard with the Demon Hands being able to harass Pharaoh. Um, he should be having some issues staying in lane here. The only concern he's going to have is the Demon Hands are AoE damage, so this is going to result in exactly what's happening now, lane control for Pharaoh. Because Soul Stealer is going to inadvertently push this lane by dealing damage to multiple uh, sources. Hellfire going off there. They're going to do a bunch of damage to Soul Stealer here. And Pharaoh will back off. But effectively harassing that Soul Stealer. Meanwhile, in mid, Ravitor has been left alone as Adro on that Master of Arms has decided it's better for him to take off, go to base, get some mana back. Etc. Ball Lightning gonna hit Torture. We'll kill him, but no, no, won't kill him. Fort Lightning actually gonna miss, as now they're diving. Charge Shot is gonna help finish off Torture, so he's gonna die. Nice and pale stun from there, Pest, from Pesty, trying to help save Torture. Meanwhile, up top, Hop Rata does fall, so like I said, the rune coming in, and, or the ward coming in, and all of a sudden, yep, there it is. Good luck with the Nature's Veil, buddy. Pesty trying to chase somebody down here, puts the, uh, health pot and everything as he's in a little bit of trouble now. No nope, ball lightning not available, so. Actually limp killing souls to the run bottom, so I completely missed that. Traps him in the walls and just so much health on damage, plus the tormented soul. Ouch, nice power supply there. Or mana battery, I guess. Well played from limp. That was rather impressive. <laughs> now We'll see how effectively he's able to stay in lane. Of course, it just took a bunch of damage. But that's going to help him do a lot. 346 GPM now on Pharaoh. He is the highest form in the game. Soul Stealer's all the way down there at 160. Tormented hmm. Soul will help harass a little bit and clean up a CS. So already Hellborn with a 1,000 gold lead, 1,200 experience lead. Despite the 2-2 two two hero kills. As Ophelia just jungles faster than a War Beast, 276 GPM on Oath, and 230 on War Beast. Also, uh, despite the fact that Legion is winning mid, Hellborn are now winning both top and bot, as, so there's a 350 gold per minute compared to the 124 of Keeper, and Pharaoh's at 334 compared to Solstice's 190, so... Two lanes being won here by the guys of Stay Green, as well as the jungle, where Ophelia has superior farm to that War Beast, not a big surprise. As he just doesn't do that. Invis Torture over here looking for yet another jump onto Soul Sealer. And with lane control, it's going to be a little difficult. Invis Rune in another 30 seconds, so he can afford to stay down here for a long time. In fact, just leech CS bottle picked up by Pharaoh, and now he's going to look for the jump. As Soul Sealer's like, yeah, something bad's going down here. Tormented Soul going to go off into the woods, and there's going to be. Yep, there's the jump. Obviously, Torture is showing himself, but doesn't really care because Soul Slayer is now completely dead. So, good gank there from Tort, grabbing an Invis Rune, going down, picking up yet another kill on the Soul Slayer. They're keeping him down in the early phase, which can really screw over a Soul Slayer. Ball, ball Lightning actually does hit there, but is the charge shot going to be enough? Yes! And the Fort Lightning still not going to do enough damage, so Swindle just throwing out the Impale and will be able to survive. Warby's still in the jungle, he's just farming his brains out as fast as he can. 240, 50 gold per minute now. But Limp still doing better, now gonna push top. Only level 5 is only 2 minions, but with the creep wave coming in here, this very well could be... Yep, this is gonna be a tower kill. So that'll help everybody out, obviously. And they're gonna continue this. Guy Cannon coming in with the next wave. So it looks like they're going to keep trying here to uh, 
Well, it's not poison spray that goes there, and we're looking for a poison burst as well. Gonna happen. Nature's Veil obviously going out, but... Uh, lots of damage being taken here by Keeper. He has to back off. He won't die. Oh my god. He's dead. Wow. That's shocking. I really don't think that was gonna happen. A secondary tower kill gonna happen here from Hellboy. <laughs> Just the push is way too strong. So already 4k gold, 1.5k experience, while Eddie misses in middle, and the swindle is just hanging out by himself, torture finally coming back to lane. And things are obviously going very well here for SG as Viscera falls once again. This jumps him. He's like, hello, I'm gonna walk up to you, put you in the mummy walls, and then you're gonna die. Up, oh, Pharaoh, Wrath of the Pharaoh, and the Elfire in the walls, and it's like, hello. Fat lady singing. Five to two hero kills. Pretty substantial golden experience advantage considering how early in the game we are. And SG, no surprise, has this game pretty well in hand. So we'll see what... Uh, what Legion is able to do at this point. We're still pretty solidly in the laning phase. It's going to end relatively as soon as we start to see some more rotation, but I think Legion are going to be the ones that need to rotate more than anything else because they've more or less stuck to their lanes. Warbeast has not come out of the jungle once. He's at 270 gold per minute compared to mine up to 350. And just looking at the GPM charts here, it's that's not good. Morbius and Ravener both doing alright, but nobody else in Legion has much farm at all. Solster actually has the lowest farm in the game, as he's died three times. But... I mean, like, is rotation going to help them that much? They're going to have to, at this point. I mean, Masera can no longer just sit bottom, because Pharaoh is destroying him. He's level 5, Pharaoh's level 8. Pharaoh has Wrath back up. He's got a bottle. So if Solster comes to his lane, he's just going to die continuously. In Sega, you just go middle. Try to help uh, Master and Ravener pick up a kill on this Pestilence of Torture. Or Bugs on Rav. That's going to provide lots of vision, so they know what's going on. Playing a little defensively. Here comes an Invis Ophelia with some min Sorry, Rav. And there's going to be the Charge Shot, but Catlamane immediately falls. Looking for a jump here now on the Keeper, who has a root, so he could throw that out here and do a bunch of damage. Meanwhile, Adro going to drop as well to Pharaoh. As the Mummy Wolves weren't even using that kill onto... Rav. Off of the side now, Poison sp or Toxic Spray going off onto Keeper. He will drop the root, but the Impel Stun goes off as well. Torture off to the side, almost dying. Raw Lightning will hit Ophelia, but Fitzbell dies as well, and Oaf's going to live. Holy crap, everybody needs to... Ophelia and Torture have no health. And all of Ophelia's minions have no health, but that's... They're gonna get four for nothing. I just... Alright. GG's. I mean, we're, we're, we're nine minutes in. This is not unrecoverable. No game that's nine minutes old is ever unrecoverable. But it's going to require SG to throw at this point. Because they're probably the best team in Han right now, and they can't, like, they're not going to do they, They're not that stupid. Even if they were that stupid, they might just be that much better. That, like, even if they continuously made bad decisions, they can make up for it just with pure individual player skill. Meanwhile, Unbought Soulstealer once again going to have to get the hell out of there because Wrath of the Pharaoh is available. And he cannot do anything. He is level 6, so that's nice. Has access to his ultimate. But once again, the farm is just pitiful. Pretty much everybody on the Hellborn side is out farming everybody on the Legion side. And both Slither and Pharaoh are or double the GPM, essentially, of the highest farmers on the Legion. Pesty Illusions, and the real Pesty as well. Gonna scout out some stuff over here. We'll find Warbeast. He's gonna have to just... He pops the ultimate from an Illusion and runs away. Obviously, he doesn't know it's an Illusion, but... Now, Hellborn know his ulti's down. 
Torch again, some CS on bottom, probably looking to push this tower. As he has Impalement level 3. Off to the side, we got Slither and Pharaoh trying to chase somebody down. Adra off to the side is <laughs> and that master is just like, I'm gonna port away. What can I do? Jump here from Pesty as Ravener's now in some trouble, has the bugs on him. Lightning speed. Gonna take a lightning speed, so Pesty might not be able to catch him here. Ball lightning actually will stop him. Meanwhile, Torch here does successfully kill that bottom tower with a level 4 impalement. So now we're at the point where Z Freak is solo pushing towers. While four heroes from the Hellborn are gonna push a secondary mid tower at 11 and a half minutes into this game. Wrath of Pharaoh coming in here onto Ravener. So the impulse stun misses, but we still have the walls up and he's dead. Mid second they're gonna drop here. We've got a port going up top of Slither's protecting that tier one. Legion with one outer tower remaining. Now Torture gonna try to make it zero. He probably won't get this tower without any help, but he's gonna put up quite a lot of damage into it. As it is now below half. Ravener off to the side looking to get something, but Torture's at 300 gold per minute, he's at 200, so this might actually not work very well for him. Torment Soul will snipe him out there. Wrath of the Pharaoh not available. We'll throw the ball lightning and it's not going to hit anything. So this is the last outer tower for Hellborn. That's going to be finished up. Or for Legion, it's going to be Hellborn. It's going to be Hellborn in a second. And now we have 500 gold per minute on three heroes and 300 plus on the other two. Suffice to say, this game is going to be over in a couple of minutes. 11 to 2 hero kill. Lead 16k gold, 9k experience. Up top, Keeper's trying to take this tower. It's getting forced out a little bit by Slither. That's for some reason my computer's slowing down. Not really sure why. But things are starting to skip a little bit, I guess. Anyway, in middle, we've got Keeper. Sorry, Warbeast running away. This is getting really awful, so I'm going to pause this for a second. All right, I'm back. I closed some stuff. Hopefully that'll, that'll help out. Uh, and it is running a little smoother, it seems. As Warby's off to the side, he has, nope, he has a port. He's going to try to port out, I guess. Yep, there it goes. Meanwhile, bot get pushed in successfully. And hopefully this will be more or less the end. Like, I mean, uh, just a bit of an ugly game here for RFAM. I, they're, they're a plenty solid team. They've had some pretty solid success, but... SG, I think, at this point, are just sort of on a war path. They're like, we're going to... We have to win every series because we got knocked down a loser's bracket so damn early. So we're going to play extremely careful, and we're just going to roll over our opponents. And that's, that's pretty clearly what's happening here. Congor being attempted. And this is going to go in favor of SG relatively easily. Token presumably going to Slither. So that's always good. We can't even CC yet. And we've already seen a Congor kill and six hero kill six tower kills and eleven hero kills. The tower will be denied. Or be stop pushing top.
We're past the 15 minute mark, and Hellborn are pushing base now. Gonna take a base tower relatively easily. Wrath and Pharaoh jumping in onto two as a bunch are getting caught up here. Root goes off onto a couple as well, and actually it's also doing a bunch of damage. Not gonna be enough. Ball Lightning gets eaten by Torture, and he's gonna jump in for some reason. Nero's Blessing gonna save him, and there goes Ravener. So, two deaths. Warbeast finishes the top secondary tower. That's kinda nice, but this is gonna be Bot Racks in favor of Hellborn. And that's not surprising. A Legion Barracks has been destroyed. Now I'm gonna head mid. Ophelia over here cleaning up the creep wave, Ibb is keeper. As the GG's are getting called. Not surprising. Off to the side over here, nice jump there from uh, Pesty, gonna get both Soul Stiller and Master. Legion side retreating into their well. Keeper of the forest over here. As nature's veil available. So he'll be alright. And I guess Warbeast was continuing to push top and just cut the hell out of there. Hellborn are just they're making the Legion base their home. They don't want to leave. There's no really reason to. Raven are now going to get a bunch as Impel Stun goes on to two. Master of Arms is going to be the target. Poison Force hits four. Wrath of the Fairy finishes off Adro. Keeper gets caught by the mummy walls, and he's going to die here as well. So there's diving the well. There goes there goes uh, Keeper, actually. As once again, we're going to massively slow down. What the hell is going on here? Pit spell gets denied. What, really? What is... Boy, this is ugly. I'm going to pause again, I guess. It worked last time, and hey look, it works again this time. Just pausing and resetting for some reason it tends to work as Swindles, they're all just diving the well at this point. And they're gonna get some kills, so they actually die, so Pharaoh and Torture are the only ones alive. Torture's all the way back at base, but... I suspect this is not gonna be too much longer here if the Legion time side is their only... Uh, person who's alive is Soul Stealer, and Pharaoh's getting blocked out a little bit by the Keeper Minions, but he doesn't really care. So there's the GG. Just a roll by S-Stream. So that's gonna do it for Game 1, and we'll move on to Game 2.